Felix, uh, the Credit Suisse saga just went from bad to worse. Add tax fraud to the litany of complaints against Credit Suisse. Let me explain what that's all about. What does it mean? Is it a financial crisis to come or is it just a blip somewhere in a little Swiss village? Well, let me tell you all about it. Before we do that, I want to encourage you to get your hands on this free benchmark that Winston made for you. 600 European stocks, all the largest 600 European stocks, full benchmark. Why? Because European stocks are on sale. The currency is super, super low. Doesn't mean you should indiscriminately be buying them, but you might want to do some digging and you might just find some gems. Um, I hold probably only two or three European stocks, but they'll be on that list. So check it out. FelixFriends.org slash Euro 600. FelixFriends.org slash Euro 600. It's free. It's fun. Dig. Learn. Of course, none of the following is financial advice. You know that by now. Don't take financial advice from people who wear cravats. Uh, it's generally a bad idea. <laughs> All right, then, what have we got in store here? Well, the U.S. Justice Department is investigating Credit Suisse for, uh, well, helping people with um, money laundering, tax evasion type stuff. The sort of thing that almost brought UBS to its knees some 10 years ago or so. Uh, there is a whistleblower, um, which is always nice. It's an insider that they apparently continue to assist Americans with concealing assets from the United States after 2014, which is when the Swiss banks got, you know, slapped around quite significantly by the US. Um, they've gotten away with lying to the United States, says an attorney for the whistleblowers. And um, the bank denies it, of course. We've implemented extensive enhancements since 2014 to root out individuals who seek to conceal assets uh, our clear policy is to under close undeclared accounts. It doesn't mean they haven't got some that slipped the net or some big ones that slipped the net somewhat knowingly. Uh, so they are basically, um, every scandal that has been around in the last 12 months, they were part of, from Tuna to Archegos, from everything else. And um, there is also a trial going on <laughs> around um, FX, um, conspiracies, essentially, which is going on literally today, uh, which is all, so it's Credit Suisse, uh, the main one there. So they might need about 9 billion Swiss francs or dollars approximately in the next two to three years. Now, this bank has a market cap of 11 billion. Uh, raising 9 billion when you are worth 11 is a bit of a challenge. Uh, shareholders are unlikely to swallow an 80% dilution. So they're continuing to sell the family silver uh, hopefully their um, structured product unit, um, the Mandarin Oriental in, in, in Zurich, um, and are hoping that they're going to somehow survive or get some sort of bailout. The US government sent them about $3.1 billion two days ago, um, at least in my view. Uh, somebody in Switzerland urgently requested $3.1 billion. The Swiss Central Bank didn't have it. I'm not making this up. Uh, it's all documented. Uh, look at my Twitter. And... Um, who could that be? Who in Switzerland? Nobody all year along in Switzerland has cried for that amount of dollars or any amount of dollars. So it's a bit bit staggering, really. But also, of course, it's staggering before we look at some more details in Credit Suisse is our returns. We're up 109% so far this year on our options portfolio. And that just goes to show the strength of our trading protocol that I've developed over years. And it makes money, at least for me. You want to learn how it makes money for you? Then check it out. Give us a call. If you have a five, six, seven, eight, nine figure portfolio, I'm not kidding with those numbers. We've got students on all of those levels. Uh, go to phoenixfriends.org slash coaching and uh, book a call with us. Have a chat how we get you there. And um, moving on swiftly, Credit Suisse's default protection costs is up here, right? That's where it is. Um, Deutsche Bank is also a little bit in trouble, but it's down there. Barclays is down there. So insane difference, right? Five times. Markets are shorting Credit Suisse. That's what happens. You know, the cockroaches come out and they're short. Well, I mean, you can't really blame them. They just want to make money. Uh, so the short of free float is, is now up here at uh, about 7%. You might say that's not very high. I am invested in all sorts of ARK funds, which I, you know, shorted at 20% or whatever. But you know, for a bank, this is pretty staggering stuff. And the share price in blue here continuing to, to drop. Uh, this is also quite important. If you're a trader, 
you will appreciate that bid ask spreads are important. So there's somebody bidding, there's somebody asking. Uh, the gap in a liquid market that functions well is a couple of cents. In a non-liquid market, that spread gets very, very, very wide. And that's exactly what's happening here. So the spread is almost two. Uh, which is insane. And this is on a bond. So it means liquidity is dried up. Nobody wants to touch the stuff. The people who have it want to sell it. The people who want to buy it don't want to pay much for it. And they're not coming to any kind of meeting here. No exchanges going on uh, of that. And um, look at this. This sums up what the market thinks of Credit Suisse. Price to book ratio on Credit Suisse is just over 0.2. 0.2. This is a bank. Why wouldn't the price to book value ratio be at about one at least, right? You'd think that what they have on their books is worth what it says on the books. We think there is an 80% haircut coming. 80%. And Deutsche Bank's the same, by the way, um, which is about the same size in terms of market cap now, much, much bigger uh, credit derivative exposure uh, than, than Credit Suisse. So a bigger problem. So what's going to happen here? Well, either we're going to find some sort of shining knight in a, in a, in a, in a calf town or something. He's going to bail them out with some oil money or something, or governments are going to step in. And when governments step in, what happens? It's stimulus. Yeah, it's stimulus. It's inflationary as well. So if we go back to the same idiocy we've been on since 2008, that apparently we're going to solve by bailing ourselves out again and again and again, much like the Brits are doing with quantitative easing. That's what they're back, back to. Yep, governments buying bonds, quantitative easing. Uh, Yellen said yesterday that they are studying the US bond market. Why? Because liquidity is starting to dry up. Why? Because the biggest buyers of US treasuries are the Fed. They're not buying, they're selling. The Chinese, they're not buying. The Japanese can't afford to buy because of the crazy currency exchange. They can't afford to hedge. And therefore, no one's buying. Liquidity dries up. What happens? Bad things happen. Look at the UK. So, more quantitative easing to come, entirely possible, but we do get bailed out at some point. But for now, macro dominates everything. You saw the inflation numbers today, uh, pretty staggering stuff. So we continue to be on our bearish sentiment. What does that mean? Great time to buy stocks, great time to trade, great time to make money on the volatility. Volatility is definitely there. Uh, check it out. Give us a call, felixfans.org slash coaching. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you very much. See you on the next one.